situated on the shores of the great Loch Ness, just a 31 minute drive from Inverness. You will find the ruins of Urquhart Castle. The beauty you see here today hides centuries of bloodshed and battles that were fought here. Originally, it was believed that a Pictish fort once stood here. The castle was built around 1230 by the Durward family. It was built to assert the royal authority of Alexander II. The castle was captured in 1296 by Edward I of England. On site, you will find a working replica trebuchet that was built in 1998. It can launch a boulder at 126 miles per hour. Here we approach the gatehouse, which was added in the 1200s to early 1300s. Government troops deliberately blew up the gatehouse after the first Jacobite uprising of 1689 and 90. As we enter the gate to the north side is the guardhouse or the porter's lodge. The porter was responsible for checking visitor credentials and locking up the gates after dark. As you enter and turn to the left, you will see a modern spiral staircase that leads up to the first floor of the gatehouse. As you make your way up the stairs, you'll find a two-room lodging made up of a hall and chamber. This was most likely the constable's accommodations. From the first floor of the gatehouse, you will see Grant Tower in the distance. You will also see sweeping views of Loch Ness. The destruction you currently see here was caused by the garrison of troops that were loyal to the monarchs of William and Mary. They wanted to make sure the Jacobites had no access to this. So in 1692, they blew up the gatehouse with gunpowder. The building built into the side of the hill is the visitor center. Once again, another peak at Loch Ness. There's a second lodge within the gatehouse. This is the kiln house where corn was dried and stored. Directly opposite from the gatehouse in the courtyard is the water gate. This gave access to the Loch Ness shore. Most of the provisions of the castle would have come by boat, so this was a very important entrance. The lock provided an important food source. While castle residents did eat the river fish, they preferred cod from the ocean. The problem with the fish at the lock is that the supply would fluctuate. Fish brought in from the ocean was a little more reliable. For tourists, this gives a very close-up view to Loch Ness. Who knows, you may even spot Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster. This is the South Gable. It's the remnants of a west wall and the building of the edge of the lock. It is believed to have been used as a smithy. While visiting the castle, you'll find a round stone structure called a ducat. These were used for housing pigeons as they provided a regular supply of pigeon meat and eggs. Those pigeons certainly had an amazing view. The most prominent feature of Urquhart Castle is the Grant Tower. The tower was built by the Grant family in the 1500s. The area my daughter is walking out of was most likely the kitchen for Grant Tower. So let's go inside the tower and take a look. The tower is five stories tall and the entrance leads into the hall. This was most likely the reception area of the tower and also there was some limited dining that occurred here as well. The room was lit with some large windows and it has amazing views as you can see here. The tower has a set of stairs that is not for the faint of heart. They are extremely steep and not easy to climb.
The climb is worth it as you get to the top and see the views that behold you once you arrive. Most of the tower's south wall has collapsed. It's believed this occurred during a windstorm during February of 1715. Looks like there was another level at the top that was not accessible during our trip. The tower provides views of the courtyard that lead to the Great Hall, Chapel, and other buildings from around 1300. And once again, great views of Loch Ness. These stairs lead to the cellar of the Great Hall, which is all that remains of this great structure. The hall was the main living space of the castle. It was used for administration of the estate. It was used for great feasts and banquets. It was also where the household staff slept, ate, and socialized. There was even a private chamber for the Lord and his family. The Great Hall was made from large timbers, and the surviving walls show the supports that held the timber floors above. As we look out to Loch Ness, you'll see a passenger ship which carries passengers and tourists on tours of the loch, hoping to get a glimpse of the great Loch Ness Monster. This castle has been ravaged over the centuries by Edward I of England, Robert the Bruce, the MacDonald Islemen, and finally the Jacobites. From the top of the gatehouse, you get a fantastic view of the Great Ditch, which defended the landward side of the castle. A fixed bridge replaced the drawbridge that was once there. Here is a kiln and furnace that was created at the castle for an unknown purpose. On the north side of the castle, you will find another beach access. This will provide you with direct access to Loch Ness. The castle is sprawled across two mounds of land and is surrounded on three sides by water. Either before or after your tour of the castle, definitely go inside the visitor center. Inside you will find a scale model of what the castle is believed to have looked like prior to being destroyed. The visitor center is very nice with lots of gifts and trinkets and souvenirs available to choose from. There is even a theater which plays a movie about the history of the castle prior to entering the castle itself. If you're hungry or thirsty, don't worry. The castle has a fully stocked cafe for all of your food and beverage needs. We hope you enjoyed this tour of Urquhart Castle. To see our other videos about Scotland, stay tuned to the end and click on the Scotland playlist. Thank you for watching. We encourage you to subscribe to our channel, like this video, in order to see more videos and content just like this. Once again, click on the Scotland playlist to the right to see our other Scotland videos.